in the last one, we set a challenge to find the best car we could find for under £10,000. And I really think we did that when we hit the winning bid on this 2010 Mercedes C63 AMG. To begin with, this car has just come back from the body shop, so it spent about four or five days at the body shop. And I'm so eager to get into that driver's seat that as soon as it got delivered, I'm recording this clip. So let's run through what the body shop did. To begin with, this driver front wing had a slight little kink in it. It wasn't really bad. I wasn't gonna go ahead and change the whole wing because of it, but because it is aluminium, I didn't wanna risk tapping it out myself and trying to straighten it out. So I left it to the professionals that went to the body shop and he's done a fantastic job with the paintwork as well. So not only the wing was resprayed, this back door had a scrape in it. So that has been resprayed as well. Moving on to the back bumper. So this is a piece of damage we didn't anticipate when we were bidding on the car from Copart because I didn't see any damage on the back bumper. So it hurt the budget a little bit. We are getting dangerously close to that budget limit but it looked like it re reversed into a pole and it had crease marks and like a slight little cut in the back bumper but that has all been resprayed so the whole back bumper has been resprayed then we move on to this side skirt on the passenger side this i am still convinced is a copart special it looks to me exactly where a forklift would go under the car to lift the car up but as you can see now that side skirt looking fantastic this car as it sits provided everything is good with that suspension leg we changed should be good for the road but you're gonna have to hold on a little bit longer because we have some mods before i show you the mods this to me although it's an asbo spec or blacked out looking thuggish to me it's still a classy family car it's a four-door powerhouse so with the mods i didn't want to go over the top i just wanted to complement what's already there so as you saw we've got the carbon fiber rear spoiler i just wanted to complement the car so if we come over here we've got a big fin carbon fiber diffuser we've got a genuine carbon fiber front splitter and we've got some gloss black side skirts the side skirts we kind of had to budget out on because we've got a ten thousand pound hard limit we can't cross that and the carbon fiber side skirts were very very pricey so all we could get was this diffuser front splitter and glass black side skirts just to beef it out a little bit so what should we start with i think let's start on the back get the diffuser on and then we'll move forward should be nice and easy i think the old one just clips off but we'll find out i've got some tiger seal just in case hold it down but let's get the old diffuser off and get the new one on now i've never changed a diffuser before so i'm just going to have a look underneath see if there's got any fixings if not it will just all be clips and we can pull it off like two very small Phillips screws, we'll get them out and then this should just pop off. simple as that four screws and a series of clips and that is a diffuserless c63 amg so that's all clipped in nice and easy job so now i think we'll just use the original four screws underneath and get that secured in if ever this starts to pop out i'll go ahead and tiger seal it but because i'm a bit skeptical i don't know how i feel about it it does look pretty mega and it does complement the spoiler but i'll have to see it on the road if i tiger seal it it's going to be permanent it's going to be very difficult to get off again so we'll see how it goes if it does ever pop out i'll go ahead and put some tiger seal but for now it should be all good with the four screws underneath First mod complete, diffuser on. Let's move on to the side skirt. <laughs> so guys, this is why you don't cheap out on mods. So if I line it up at the back of the car like that, come over to the front, 
it's sticking way out so i think let's leave the side skirts for now let's get the splitter on and then i might i'll see how it looks i'll mock it up i might trim the top might trim the front of it we'll see how it looks i don't want to ruin the look of the car for the sake of a cheap plastic side skirt Let's move on to the front splitter. Hopefully it lines up a bit better than that side skirt. It should. I bought it from a reputable company. It was expensive, so let's mock the front up. What I'm planning to do with this is firstly, put some double-sided tape just to hold it in place. Then I'll put some self tappers and then to make it solid, I will go ahead and put a nut and bolt. That way that splitter won't go anywhere. Like I said, got some 3M tape. That's just to hold it in place whilst the Tiger Seals cures and I, I have time to put the self tappers in and then finally the nut and bolts. So, shall I do it or shall I drill the pilot holes first? the carbon splitter all on. So the fitment, the fitment was good. It wasn't like the diffuser where it just slotted in. We did have to kind of manipulate it a little bit and it was tricky because the glue was setting and whatnot. So didn't get much footage, but all it's held on with initially is the double-sided tape. So the 3M tape just to hold it in place while we were working on it. Then obviously the Tiger Seal would dry over time and that would be an extra bit of security. Thirdly, all along is self-tapping screws and then just to hold it in place, there's about five, so one on each side, two in the middle. There's about four or five nuts and bolts going right through the bumper and the diffuser. It was a bit tricky. Ideally, you'd want the bumper off while doing this kind of stuff, but I don't really fancy taking the whole bumper off, so we did it the quick way. So I think this means one thing. Test drive time. What do you reckon, cameraman? Mm-hmm. Let's go for the first test drive. Right, and we are off. Our maiden voyage in the C63 AMG. Let's see what this car's all about. So we're in comfort at the moment. Let's hit this bridge, get a sound check. Here we go, downshift. First gear, are we ready? Oh, that noise is unbelievable. I hope it's coming through on the cam. Let's see if we can pull open the sunroof. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is incredible. That is incredible. I did warm the car up, so don't worry. But the budget we worked with on this car I don't care if it blows up, we're sending it to the moon! Wow! That noise is so addictive! Just listen to the downshift! Oh, I really hope that's coming through on the mic! Because in person you can feel it in your chest! but just feel that torque as well. We're in second gear now. Wow, you get a launch backwards. That's incredible. Let's knock it back into comfort. We're in a bit of traffic. Okay, now one thing I've noticed is that exhaust does not sound stock. And when we had the car jacked up 
and I was changing the suspension leg, I did notice it looked like the secondary decats had been removed. I could still see the primary cats, so it's not rowdy, it's not, it's not lost, lost the tone. I've heard a lot of straight pipe C63s and they just sound, they just sound like they're screaming and that natural V8 tone kind of get lost, but with this, that tone is still rich. And on second gear, Wow, and here out in the countryside, as you're passing these big hairy trees, the sound just bounces off the trees and it just sounds tremendous. And I think that is what this car is all about. This is not a C63 with a V8 engine, a 6.2 V8 powerhouse. This is a 6.2 V8 powerhouse with a C-Class strapped to it. That's all this is. This is all about the engine. And it's absolutely incredible. It's just instant torque. And what a shame it is. This is a true tribute to the 6.2 litre V8s because now they've gone to the 2 litre hybrid system. It might be a faster car. It might be a better looking car, I don't know. In my opinion, this is the best looking C63, if not the facelifted model. But for me, that engine is just incredible. How they've gone to a two litre from this is just beyond me. Now I'm gonna stay quiet for a bit. We'll get you some screen time of just the C63 tearing it down the road. I mean, this car, this is our first drive and I can't hear any knocks. That suspension feels fine. I should mention between the two episodes, episode one and episode two, we did go for a wheel alignment and the car is traveling 100% straight. It's passed an MOT with no advisories. This car is 100% for the road. Wow, 6.2 litre displacement. This car is a naturally aspirated. We don't have no turbos. We are just 6.2 litres of pure muscle car. Now I was really worried around the corners. How would this handle around the corners? There's a lot of competition between an M3, RS4, C63 in this era. They were the main cars going around in the family car, I mean, muscle car generation. For me, the M3, yes, around the corners, you are gonna be a lot quicker, but this, on the straight lines, there is nothing touching it for this era. It's incredible, the torque that you can feel. I think it's got almost double the torque of an M3 of this era, so it's absolutely incredible. I'm gonna stay quiet now, we'll point the camera to the road and we'll see what this car's all about. Wow! The sound is incredible. You can't recreate this sound in a modern car. This is the last generation we're gonna have that throaty, raw V8 sound note. Just let that sink in. We are the last generation to experience the sound, a car of this nature. The future generations are gonna all be hybrids, electrics. You guys can keep your Teslas because this is something special. <laughs> that sounded so good, we need to go for a second run. That tunnel. Here we go. Drop it down into first. And... Wow. <laughs> now I should mention the gearbox really is, I guess if you want to be picky, that is the... I guess you can call it the letdown of the car. For me, it adds character. I mean, just dropping through the gears, having that little bit of delay it is a bit of character to the car. 
but I know there's a lot of people that complain about the gearbox, it's a bit laggy, it's only a single clutch gearbox, so it's an old type of gearbox, but for me it just feels solid, I mean we can drop through the gears, so I'll give you an example, we're in third gear, if I want to go up to fourth, change, and it changed, so there is a delay there, downshifts are not too bad, but around these country lanes it just feels fine, I mean you can anticipate when you want to drop the gears, when you want to shift up, you maybe shift up a second earlier than you would in a DSG and it, and it compensates fine. Another thing about this car, this car's got no Bluetooth, it's, it's, it's old school, this car is raw, there's no Bluetooth but you don't need a soundtrack when you're listening to that exhaust note. And I think this car has a misconception of it's very tail happy. I mean, it's a very warm day out today, so the roads are sticky, the tires are nice and warm. We are 100% we are hooked up on the road. We haven't slipped at all. We've got traction control off, by the way. I mean, we can drop it down in second and there is no slip, absolutely no slip. That is 100% torque all the way through the rev ranges and we're not getting no slip. I'm sure if we went crazy in the bends we would get slip, but it feels fine. Another thing between this car and the 507 edition that I previously had for a short while, the 507 comes as standard with an LSD and there are a lot of people that install LSDs on their standard C63s. Now for me, I'm not very rehearsed or I've not had a lot of experience in high power rear wheel drive cars. So for me, I prefer without the LSD because when this loses traction, we kind of just stay still and the wheels spin. Whereas with an LSD, you really have to fight it a little bit more. You do get a bit more handling, I guess. But from what I've been told, the LSD is a bit more of a handful and more for the experienced rear wheel drive drivers. So I don't think this car has an LSD. It doesn't feel like it. I mean, when we do slip traction, it's, it's just staying still. The traction control just kicks in and we're okay, we're safe. Okay, so we've done a bit of driving. Let's pull in, find a nice place to pull in and we'll talk money and let the car cool down a little bit. So let's pull in here. So let's talk money. Of course, an important part of this series because we had a strict 10,000 pound challenge. Now, the car itself, you saw the bidding with the fees and the recovery, we came to a total of £8,500 this car delivered to me. Then the first thing that we got changed was this driver door. So the driver door with the mirror came to £130, the door itself £80 and the, door, the wing mirror was £50, so £130. Then we came into our big problem of not being able to find front end parts and that's where a close friend of mine kicked in and he really pulled through so he got me a big package deal all the brackets, the headlight, the bumper, and in fact, a couple of you have probably realized already that rear diffuser was used. That was part of the package. So for that complete package, it came in at 650 pound. Then of course we had paint. So the paint, he painted the wing, he painted that back door, the back bumper, and the passenger side skirt. That came to a total of 550 pound. Now it paints an interesting one. You've got two options, or many options in fact. You can go really high end or you can go on a budget. Now I'm sure there's body shops out there that will do a 10 out of 10 job, a job that you can't even notice has been painted. But for those kind of jobs, what I've found is they're asking thousands of pounds and for us on this budget, it just wasn't going to work. So we went kind of in, you could call it low range. Looking at the job out here in the sun, that looks tremendous to me. I can see blemishes, so I can see where orange peel maybe isn't consistent in, in sections, but for the £10,000 challenge, I can't complain. A great job, £550. Then we had the little niggly things like uh, MOT, £30, a wheel alignment, £40. And that is about it. Let's tally that up and see what we've come out at. My math serves me correct. That brings our total to £9,900 for this beautiful... Wow, I just need to stand back and look at it because that looks tremendous out here in the sun. Oh, but there is a bit of a hitch. I forgot to include the splitter. So we did cheat a little bit. The splitter came in at about £300, £350. So technically we went over budget, but I'm not complaining. Let's just stand back and take a look at this beast.
So from me, that is this challenge complete. We technically hit the 10,000, we technically went over. Personal preference took over. From me, that is this episode complete and I hope you join me for the next one.